one of the founders of quantum mechanics, designed a thought experiment to drive home the strange rules of his theory. Let's say we put a cat and a vial of poison in a box. We add an atom of radioactive uranium and a Geiger counter. If the uranium decays, it sets off the Geiger counter, which then releases the poison and silently kills the cat. Before we open the box and look, we can't actually know whether the uranium has decayed or not, since radioactive decay is a probabilistic quantum event. Here's the question. Is a cat dead or alive? Well, according to quantum mechanics, the cat is neither dead nor alive, but the sum of the two states. Well, at that point, you say, well, that's nonsense. That's preposterous. How can you be both dead and alive simultaneously? Schrodinger's cat was supposed to show that nothing in this universe is certain until someone makes a measurement. But another pioneer of quantum mechanics, Eugene Wigner, believed it could teach us something else about the working of the universe. That consciousness controls everything. Bigner said, let's take it one step farther. If I, a human being, looks at the cat, I am conscious. Therefore, consciousness determines existence. At that point, Einstein went ballistic and said, what? You're saying that the fact that you are a conscious being determines the fact that the cat is alive? The answer is yes. And Wigner made one more step. And that is, how do I know I'm alive? You see, the cat and me, we're part of the same universe. If I don't know the cat is alive or dead, I could also be dead at the same time and not even know it. So who determines that I'm alive? Well, Wigner's friend looks at me, I look at the cat, and we exist. But then who looks at Wigner's friend? And there's an infinite chain of people looking at people, looking at people, until finally you hit cosmic consciousness. Some consciousness that's ethereal, that envelops the universe, which looks at us and says, aha, the cat is alive. 